Hey everyone, my name is Gary Ware, and I'm going to tell you a story about how play saved my life. But before I do that, I would love to play a game with you. Are you cool? Awesome. So let's just stand up. So what you're going to need to do is take your right hand and take your index finger and point it to the sky. Now make a circle in a clockwise manner. Yep, clockwise, all right. <laughs> now slowly bring it down, still going clockwise, pointing up. Okay, down, still going clockwise. Now look down, is it still going clockwise? No. All right, let's try this again. All right, hmm, interesting. All right, point in the sky, clockwise, pointing up. Now slowly bring it down, still pointing up. Okay, now look down. Is it going clockwise? Hmm, didn't think so. All right, have a seat. <laughs> As the late, great Wayne Dyer once said, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Now, how many people, by show of hands, would love to have a device that will help you have more productivity, maybe get closer with friends, maybe bring more joy in life? If that's you, just say, yeah, that's me. And that is my hope for you. I'm going to share um, how I recovered from burnout using play and share some really powerful tips that if you apply it, will help you do the same thing. So on to my story. It's January of 2012. I'm sitting at my office. I have a stack in my to-do list. It was like a mile long. I have over 120 unread emails. See, I am the director of digital marketing for one of the largest digital marketing agencies in the world. I have a huge staff. Um, this is my dream job. Matter of fact, when I was younger, I've always wanted to go into digital marketing. Um, I started making websites for my friends. Uh, matter of fact, it's a little embarrassing. I had a Christina Aguilera fan site because I was that much of a fan. <laughs> and here, I'm sitting at my desk, and if I was honest with myself, I would feel like I was a fraud. I was an imposter. And as I thought about it, I was 30 minutes away from an event that was going to change the trajectory of my life, but yet I was scared to go. I didn't think I deserved to go. See, that event was an improv class, and I was going to get to play, but I didn't think I could play. That didn't always used to be the case. When I was younger, I was super playful. Matter of fact, one of my favorite holidays of all time was April Fool's Day. I would get up before my family, and I would rig the house with all these little pranks. One of my favorite pranks of all time was to get a bucket of ice cold water and put it above the door <laughs> so that when my little sisters would open the door, <laughs> uh, my dad knew this. He, he knew that I was a prankster and I loved to play, and he gave me a piece of advice that stuck with me for a long time. And he said, you know, Gary, uh, there's a time for play and there's a time for work. You can play when your work is done. And I was like, okay. And that was awesome. Like, in school, it, it was perfect. I would get home, I would do my homework, and I would play. It was just as simple as that. One of my favorite things that I loved to play uh, was video games. And one of my favorite games of all time was Super Mario Brothers 3. And I loved playing Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh, matter of fact, and this is how it is with any sort of games that I love to play. If I made a mistake, instead of like, you know, sometimes as adults, what we do is you throw our hands in the air, like, oh my God, I failed. 
I wouldn't do that. I would like, all right, cool, what do I need to do next? I would strategize with my friends. We would literally get together and we would plan out how are we going to beat every single level. What did you do differently? What did you do differently? And see, like I said, that strategy of work then play, it served me well. Uh, well, up until I graduated from college and life got real. Because you see, once I stepped into the real world, things changed. You see, the work is always going on. You know, there's, it seems like to-do lists multiply <laughs> overnight. I would leave and I have three things to do and I come back and, oh my gosh, it's Bond and now, now there's 10 things. And see, like I said, I was about to go to this improv class and I'm so glad that I did. See, it was a Monday and I remember it like it was yesterday. I walked into that theater and there were 15 other people just like myself. And for two hours, we just played. It reminded me of recess in, in school. We played games like uh, we would tell a story except it was one word at a time and we would do some things that was like red light, green light. And I was completely present, completely focused. I didn't think about my to-do list. I didn't think about those conversations that I needed to have with clients when I got back. I didn't think about anything. And something magical happened. On that Tuesday, I went back to work and like that, I was able to breeze through my to-do list, the emails and the stuff, it didn't bother me. And at the time, I didn't think anything of it, I just thought it was just a fluke. Then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday came around, and I was excited. You know why? Because Monday, I got to play. And it became addicting, to be honest. So addicting that I would bring these games to my team and before meetings, we would play some really cool Energizer games. On Fridays, we would play some of these games. And over time, we got closer to each other. We were able and we felt comfortable bringing up uncomfortable topics. And we were more productive. And it just got me curious. And so I dug deeper. And I found this quote that was really fascinating. It was, the opposite of play isn't work, it's depression. You see, more, like, we're in a time where we are more connected than ever, but yet we feel more disconnected. In fact, there's a study by Gallup that says 70% of the workforce is not engaged. That results in over $500 billion of lost productivity every year. And a lot of these people are in their dream jobs, like myself. And I feel like there is an answer to this. And that answer is play. You see, there's a lot of neuroscience out there that shows that play is actually um, it's necessary. We're wired for play. And so I'm going to share five simple ways that if you're open to it, will help you activate your play drive. So you ready for this? All right, cool. Thing number one, it's mindset. Like I said earlier, I didn't think I was able to play. I thought I had to get all my work done. Professor Jane McGonigal in her book, Super Better, she said, the difference between someone who uses play as a power-up and someone who uses play as something that just, um, you know, they can't get things done is what's their purpose. You see, if you're just in that state, you're like, oh my God, I, I just, I can't deal today. I, I can't deal, I can't adult, I just can't do any of that stuff. And that is your reason for playing. Well, you see, every time you get in a situation like that, you're going to play instead of dealing what you need to deal with. However, if you say, you know what, it's been a rough day. I just need a quick pick-me-up. And you engage in a game, whether it's you know, a digital game or maybe, more importantly, a physical game, 
Well, you're going to use play as something that is going to make you just more empowered. And that brings me to my next big thing, and that's rest. Isn't it interesting that we care more about charging our phones and making sure our devices are charged than we are charging our brains? Like I said, when I was in my dream job, in my career, I thought, you know what, I, I work 12 hours. I use that as a badge of honor. And our society rewards people like that. And yes, there is a time and a place for the hustle. However, if you're not making time to rest, you're essentially going to start seeing the world as a proving ground. Our brain's number one job is to keep us alive. And if you're always tired, your brain is going to see everything around you as a threat. So we need to make rest a priority. And number three is a big one for me, and that is follow your curiosity. It's interesting, you know, as we get older, it becomes even more challenging to find things that, that uh, brings back that spirit of wonder and joy. Kids, they have genius levels of creativity, and it's because they don't judge themselves. As they get, you know, as we get older, and it's around age 13, for the first time ever, we are presented with, you know, people that have different skills than us, and a lot of times we start saying, well, they're good, and I'm not. See, I have a two-year-old son, his name is Garrett, and he loves balls. And we got him a basketball hoop, and I was showing him how to use it. And he was just so curious about what to do with a ball. And instead of using it normally, he got some tongs, and he created his own game, <laughs> uh, where he eventually you know, threw it into a drum. And that was really cool for him. So I'd like to invite you to think about what is something when you were young that brought you joy that you like to do for play? Think about that because that's going to come in handy in just a moment. Uh, the next one is we need to schedule play. It's probably going to be challenging for a lot of you, uh, especially if you prioritize work over play. And I like to invite you about how can you schedule maybe 10 minutes 10 minutes out of your day, and instead of maybe going on social media, maybe you engage in something that's playful. And it's probably going to be a challenge, and I'm going to show you why. So I'd like to invite you to cross your arms. Everyone just cross your arms in a way that's normal. All right, cool. Notice what's hands on top and what's hands on bottom. Now I would like to invite you to cross it the other way. Hmm, that's kind of awkward, huh? It's kind of challenging. All right, go back to the way that's normal. <laughs> you can put your hands down. Uh, the way that's normal is called homeostasis. It's your default way of doing things. And when you try to do something that is different from that, your body's going to reject it. That's why I invite you to just try a few minutes of play and see how it feels. And if you like it, which I'm probably guaranteed that you will, and you notice that you're a little bit more productive, you'll want to do it more. And the last one is, you need to find a playmate. Um, if you have someone in mind that is your ally, is your playmate, they can help you, especially when times are rough. There was a time uh, about a year ago, uh, me and my business partner, we split ways, and I went through a rough point where, you know, I just just felt um, a little depressed. I, I just felt like I was a failure. And I would, um, you know, I was doing all the things, because I'm the play guy, right? I was, you know, making time for play. And a good friend of mine, his name is Kai, he invited me on Fridays. We did this adventure where we called it Play It Forward Fridays. And we would do something uh, that would bring out the spirit of play, not just in ourselves and other people. And one of my favorite activities that we did was we would walk around town with little free hug signs. And it was amazing. And in that moment, it just took me out of my head 
And I, again, was very focused. And then when I went back uh, to doing what I was doing, again, it was just, I was just able to get into that state of flow. So I would like to just invite you to think of who is someone that you consider a playmate and maybe tell them about something that you want to do that is playful and they can help keep you accountable. So in closing, I would like to leave you with this quote from Oprah Winfrey. The greatest discovery of all time is that a person can change their future by merely changing their attitude. Imagine the possibilities if you gave yourself permission to play and explore your curiosity, what potentially could happen? Maybe you can go from seeing the world as a proving ground to a playground of possibilities. And as a way to help you remember that, I have a little gift for you that will be waiting outside. Thank you. <laughs>